Good day grade 11s. Welcome to your second lesson on trig functions in week 14. In this lesson we're going to be looking at your period changes in your cosine graph and again we're going to be looking at your cos theta, cos 2 theta and cos a half theta to see what these numbers do to our cos graph. So first let me get out my little pen and the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to plot the basic cos theta graph. Now grade 11's by now with all the practice we've had you should be able to do this very easy. You should know that cos of 0 goes through 1, 90 goes through 0, 180 minus 1, 270 0 and 360 0. If you don't know this or you're not sure, you don't believe me, grade 11's go check it out on your calculator. I guarantee you it's going to be that if your calculator is on degrees. And then again it repeats itself so you've got 0, minus 270, minus 180, 90 and back up to 1. So I'm just going to redraw this. Here we go. And that is your basic cos graph from minus 360 to 360. And to help us with the rest of it I'm going to pop these numbers into this table. So that goes 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 1, 0, minus 1, 0, and back up to 1. Now I'm going to change color of face before we do that. Do you agree that the amplitude of this is just 1? The range is still minus 1 to 1. And the period of the cos graph, it takes a full 360 degrees for it to start repeating. So the period of the cos theta is just a basic 360 degrees. Now let's move on to our next graph and change our color. So now we've got cos of 2 theta. So what we're going to do again is we're going to be plotting this into our basic table and see what we get. Okay, So if we do that we just need to get our calculator out and we're going to say okay fine this time we've got cos of 2 theta. So we've got cos of bracket 2 times negative 360 close our bracket and we get 1. So this time our value is 1. Let's try negative 270. So we're going to go cos, cos of bracket 2 times negative 270 and we close that and again this time we get minus 1, minus 1. So we've moved to minus 1. So we've gone from 1 up here to minus 1 down here. Let's see what happens when we do cos of minus 180. So if we pop that in our calculator we go cos of bracket 2 times negative 180 and we close our bracket and we go back up to 1. Wow! So do you see that we're going all the way through across here. Let's just see where this is crossing the x-axis. If it follows suit that we are going from here to here in what looks like 90 degrees when normally we would be doing it in 180 then at this point here which is at going to be minus 315 it should be zero. Let's have a look at that. Let's put that in our calculator. So we're going to go cos of bracket 2 times minus 315 close bracket and there you go zero. Yay so we were right. So what is happening is that this graph is going through to 270 okay it's going through to negative 1 within 90 degrees instead of 180 and then it's going back up to 108 to, to positive 1 by minus 180. So do you see that its period is now what? Its period is now 180 degrees. So the period is now 180 degrees. So do you see that by doubling the theta we're halving the period 
or you could think of it as saying that we are doubling the number of complete cycles we are seeing in the same amount of degrees. So then if we pop this in your calculator, and I'm not going to do it, I want you guys to think of it logically, what's going to happen? It's going to go through 0, through 90, back through, back through here, because we're going to finish this off again within and if we do it again, it's going to be 45, 90, 135, 180. So it goes up like that. And again at 225, 270, 315 and that. So do you see that by doubling your theta or putting your 2 in front of your theta, what have we done? We've halved the period, or we've doubled the number of cycles within the same number of degrees. Let's now look at what happens when we have half theta, half theta. So let's choose another color, and let's plot some points in. So if we do this, we've got cos of bracket 0.5 times negative 360 and we get negative 1, okay, negative 1. If we get cos of 0.5 times negative 270, close the bracket, we're going to get negative 0.71 negative 0.71. I'm hoping you recognize some of these numbers from our sine graph that we did in the last lesson. Let's try cos of bracket 0.5 times negative 180 and we close bracket. Just cancel that. OK, we close bracket and that becomes naught. So this is 0. So if we plot this now, we've got negative 1. At 270, it is now at minus 0.71. At 180, it is now at naught. So do you see that it's doing this? So it certainly looks like it's seriously been stretched out. OK, but let's just go and plot in some more points to make sure we know what's going on. So let's plot in cos of bracket 0.5 times negative 90, close the bracket, and we get 0 0.71. So now we've got 0 0.71. So therefore, that's about over there. And now we're going to do cos of bracket 0.5 times 0, close bracket, and we end up with 1, which we're kind of hoping for. So do you see that this graph is doing that beautiful bell shape, but it's doing it very slowly. So what do we think again is going to happen? Do you see we've got that lovely little bell shape curving. So I think it's going to start curving back down again because that's what the cos graph does. But let's see what we get in the calculator. So now we've got cos of bracket 0.5 times 90 and there we go we've got 0 0.71 so that's very nice. So it goes back up to 0 0.71 oh sorry it's up here 0.71 cos cos of bracket 0.5 times 180 close bracket is equal to 0 so now we're back at 0 so it goes down here okay so now it's doing that okay and what do you think is going to happen I think it's going to go down but let's have a check so if we do that, we've got cos of 0.5 times 270, which is minus 0 0.71, minus 0 0.71. And we might as well just do this one as well, where we've got 360. So we're going to go cos of bracket 
0.5 times 360 and that becomes minus 1, minus 1. So if we plot it, do you see that what has happened is we've stretched this graph out where it has taken a full 720 degrees to complete a complete cycle of your cos graph. So therefore now our period is 720 degrees. So do you see what's happened here? If we double the th number in front of theta, what happens? We halve the period. Whereas if we put a half in front, what do we do? We double the period. Right, now let's talk about y is equal to cos of minus theta. And again, I'm going to be using, same as I did in the sign lesson, the cos diagram. So, we know it goes all stations to Cape Town. Now, if we have cos of negative theta, do you agree that that would be done here. This here is would be negative theta. And let's pretend we had a positive theta there. I know they don't look exactly the same, but they are now. And let's again give this value a 3, a 4, and a 5. And this would be minus 3, 4, and 5. So if we have y is cos of theta, do you see that that would be, using Sokotoa, let me write it out here in case you've forgotten it, Sokotoa, using the cos is adjacent of our partners, we knew that cos of theta is 4 over 5. So cos theta is 4 over 5. Now if we look at y is equal to cos of negative theta. Remember that negative theta just means it's a mirror image across the x-axis. But now again we're looking at the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. So again this is the same as 4 over 5. So therefore we know that y of cos negative theta is equal to cos theta and it's all because of this cos diagram. So if you see that you would just be plotting your basic cos theta graph which you've done. Now let's talk about the standard form and all the different changes. So we know that y is equal to a cos k theta plus q is what you've learned so far now as the standard form. a is your amplitude and we know that if a is greater than 1 you're going to have a very large amplitude whereas if a is smaller than 1 we can have a small amplitude. K, we've got, if K, now remember this, if K is bigger than 1, the period gets smaller. Whereas if K is smaller than 1, the period gets bigger. And then Q, your vertical shift as always. So if we've got a positive Q, we're going up. Or if we've got a minus Q, we're going down. And grade 11s, that's all the different manipulations you need to know with your cos graph at this time. Please make sure you know all of them, how your A, your K and your Q affect your cos graph. You need to be able to draw the cos graphs or be able to work out these different variables from a drawing of the graph. And then once you've made sure you understand this, go do the assessment at the end of the section. Have a lovely day. Oh.